Hey there, Captain Giddies. I am the Blues Man, Johnny Blues, and with this video, we'll be discussing my thoughts on episode 10 of the anime series, Hibiki Euphonium. And this is where it all comes crashing down. <laughs> you know, much as I speculated, there was going to be aggression in the ranks. There was going to be potentially jealousy. And uh, in this case, you know, this episode blindsided me in the direction they chose to go with all of that. You know, even though I semi-predicted that there would be uh, aggressive tendencies between these characters and there would be jealousy, you know, I didn't make the grade you did. Friends would have a sort of uh, adversarial quality between them after this audition's process, the way everyone was chosen and the way all of that played out. Little did I suspect that Kosaka would be the chief amongst the focus of that. And you have that, you know, girl, uh, Yuko, who just for episodes and episodes, every time we see her, she's a snarky little bee. I'm sorry, but she's a brat, you know? And she's the one who's really instigating these rumors that are unfolding about there being tentatively a relationship between Kasaka and Taki Sensei from his former uh, scholastic ventures and such like that. And so there's scandal, there's rumor, there's, you know, things going along the great find that say it was only because he favored her, Taki Sensei favored her, according to all of these people, that you have, you know, essentially Kaori not being chosen for the solo. And that's, you know, it was just shocking to me to go to that nth degree. And they were really the only characters who were so bothered by this. Um, <laughs> you know, it's like we see further solidification between Kumiko and Kosaka. You know, you basically have Kosaka being like, I'm better than her. I I've, you know, studied harder. I've played longer. I just, I held my own that much better. And there is, to a point, a chip on Kosaka's shoulder, admittedly, you know, but you do still feel for her because she earned her right to be there. It had no, there was no malice, no picking and choosing and playing favorites as people are suggesting. She earned her place to be there and she's been striving so hard to want to become air quotes special. And you know, Kumiko is supportive of her. She believes she's right. You know, it's unfair for people to be trying to demean what she accomplished and twist it and pervert it into such a fashion. And it really is sad to see that they're going to that level. Um, it's also interesting because you have, you know, everyone has been sectionalized once again. They're not playing and practicing as an ensemble. Taki Sensei himself, he's like having everyone bring in carpets and blankets to lay down to, uh, you know, keep their being less of an echo, more acoustic. And, um, you know, when everyone's sort of moving everything, he gets upset because I think he, he's not too happy with everyone's now lacking uh, sort of, you know, personification of him or opinion of him. And he just has, he snaps, he breaks down for a split second there. And it's interesting because you have, uh, you know, sort of his right hand lady or whatever it is, having a teacher student, you know, sort of meeting with Kumiko. And she says, you know, don't lose focus on your scholastic ventures, but also don't let this whole band thing be ruined. You know, focus on the music, focus on the fun and the liveliness of it, the craft and the art. Don't so much uh, consume yourself with the procedural and the learning and the, you know, making it work. Don't lose that edge of fun. And it's interesting she says that. She kind of has words suggestive or otherwise to Taki Sensei along that line as well. And this all comes to fruition after we see uh, even Kumiko, you know, having been sectionalized, her little section is like, why don't you go ask Asuka what she thinks? Who do you think the better trumpet player is for this solo? And she won't answer, you know, but then we do see her going and talking effectively to Kaori, and it's like, well, what's up with that? Why, why is she sort of, uh, you know, bridging that gap, even though she said to Kumiko she couldn't offer an opinion, and she didn't care to offer an opinion? Well, she cares enough to go and, and reach out to Kaori, and it's like, why? Um, not exactly sure, but the point being, by the end of the episode, Taki Sensei comes in, and he's like, okay, look, I understand. You know, nobody here is going to be satisfied with me having chosen the people I chose, specifically Kasaka being the soloist. How's about we got this new uh, place that we're going to be able to, you know, this new form we're going to be able to go and practice at. And how's about we have a second audition? And they're not going to audition everybody all over again, you know, which I was like, really? <laughs> it comes down to the fact that Kaori wants to be 
you know, given a second chance. And you can see that Kasaka is just livid. Having earned this, having come this far, having striven this hard, and now she's had the entire affair undermined because of jealousy and because of this perceived, this ill-perceived scandal of who knew whom and who was playing favorites and yada, yada, yada. So it's a 50-50 thing where it's like, well, it's, it's fairness. It's all due fairness given the situation. But at the same time, it's so unfair that all of these characters would be brought to this point to embrace this idea of scandal so hardcore that they're perchance going to lose their best player and that's not to say Kaori is any kind of slouch. We see her practicing and we see her holding her own. And there is a little hint, even though Asuka denies giving any sort of opinion. She already has. Because she says that, you know, Kumiko, by sort of eavesdropping on Kaori's practice session, she's already sniffing out the really good players. And that's a very telling statement to make. I think we see right there in that line of dialogue that Asuka believes... Kaori deserves the chance to be the soloist over Kasaka. And it's kind of just driven me right down the middle where I, I don't know where I fall as far as who I'm rooting for. Um, I can understand it completely, the idea of fairness and wanting to give Kaori a second chance because she's been trying that much harder. But at the same time, it's like I feel for Kasaka because look at what she accomplished. Look at what she managed to do. And now she's going to have to go back and, you know, from scratch, try to prove herself all over again. And there's nothing more shameful, but that's the way the cookie crumbles, you know. <laughs> C'est la vie. Such is life. So I can't wait to see what happens when we have this second audition because Taki Sensei's stipulation has been the entirety of the band is going to hear the audition and they are going to choose. It's not going to be, there will be no room. For denials, there will be no room for speculations that, you know, playing favorites was to be had, was to uh, gauge the choice of who was chosen, and any sort of former relationships. I mean, we find out, you know, Taki Sensei and uh, Kasaka's father, or whatever it was, knew each other, or, you know, there, there was some familial and friendship uh, bridge between those two. And I guess you could see how this could be called into question. And of course, Kasaka reveals to Kumiko she has a love for. Taki Sensei, so that if that got out, that wouldn't help her position in any way, shape, or form. So it could go any which way. I have no idea how this is going to play out, and I can't wait to find out. I would even venture to say, I mean, um, why not break convention and have both of these girls play sort of a dual solo? Is that so outside the uh, stretch of imagination? I don't think so. Um, you know, I, I think it's been achieved before, and, uh, It'll just be interesting to see. So I'd love to hear from you guys in the comments below what you thought of episode 10 of Hibiki Euphonium if you've seen it and what you thought of the scandal and the jealousy, whether you were expecting it to go that level or not. I mean, throughout the entire episode, you have Hazuki, who was, for all intents and purposes, you know, cut loose in the auditions process. I really thought, with everything we saw, the focus on her having this interest in Shuichi and, you know, thinking that there's something between he and Kumiko... I really would have pegged her character for being the one to hold over some level of aggression or malice or jealousy. And there was none of that with her character. Same with Natsuki. There was none of that. So, I mean, it could really, I really feel like it could go any which way as we continue on with this story. And I'm dying to see how it all plays out. So, yeah, as I say, that's pretty much it for me on this. Hope this video finds you well. And I'll catch you all later. Peace.